welcome to our semifinal match, the first of potentially two here at the Richmond Open. It is the last standard open before we say goodbye to, Con to Dragons of Tarkir and Magic Origins. Todd Anderson on the play against Jacob Hagen, Team Emerge and Green Blue Crush. Learning there from Hagen, actually from Minneapolis, Minnesota. That's where we both live right now. I was pretty excited to see his game. I do know that Island Games is not a store in Minneapolis, so. There's not a lot of islands in Minnesota. <laughs> no, most no, things like, referred to as islands in Minnesota are just the describer being generous. Yeah, but now you know, I said I'd pick Todd to win this one. I don't know. Got the hometown thing. Now I'm conflicted. Both players are going to go to six this game, though. And I'm actually going to say this is good for Todd. I think he would like both these decks to mulligan if possible. Ramp decks. Jacob is nothing more than a ramp deck, right? Sure. Just he has no other plan. He's all ramp spells. Ramp decks mulligan really bad. Todd uh, can play on fewer lands. I'm not saying that Todd, this deck likes to mulligan, but I think he has more game. If both players start on five, Todd gets to do things. Both of these decks have one and two mana stuff that they're trying to do. One thing about game one for Jacob is he has these send to sleeps in his deck that <laughs> they can mess with Todd's deep fiend draws if he's trying to run them over, but they're, they're, they're going to the sideboard uh, after this game. Both players on six, both keeping. We have scry ones. Yeah, we used some, some Send to Sleeps. Those are pretty, pretty medium in Hagen's deck. Elvish Visionary, he's got four of those as two drops. I know that you'll be a big fan. Obviously, yeah. Todd starts out with a forest. Hagen with the forest. Todd turn two looks like he's going to traverse. I am elated that both Elvish Visionary and Pilgrim's Eye are in the top eight of this tournament. Card advantage at its finest. Todd gets a mountain and passes. And I'm actually a little interested in that. Mountains... Not good in this matchup. There's nothing to Kozlex return. You can Kozlex return. Yeah, there's a couple Nissa Vasswood Seers in Hagen's deck that you can clean up. That's actually true. Fair enough. Elvish Visionary. That one oh, less important to sweep. Well, it's interesting. Hagen wouldn't mind sweeping Todd's two drops as he actually emerges out of them, but, but the Elvish Visionary just doesn't do anything. <laughs> Todd plays Primal Druid, and now Hagen anticipates. I'm going to forgive your quip at Elvish Visionary's expense. Sure, it just doesn't do anything in his deck. It attacks for one. No, it doesn't. There's it a Primal Druid there. Blocks Elder Deep Fiend. It's probably not going to do that. It, it, it probably will do that. No, he's going to tap it, or he's going to blow it up with the Kozlex. Return. No, it's not going to do anything. You can't tap it forever. You we'll can't, see. You we'll can't see. kill it. That guy, that's not the Visionary matchup. Jacob takes a card here off Anticipate. We go to his third turn. He's got the man. It's Elvish Visionary. Should I say the elf? It'll draw him a card. What is this Elvish Visionary matchup talk? It's just great everywhere. Okay, plays an island and passes. You're right. It's great. That's exactly what he wanted turn three. <laughs> For Todd, he will emerge Wretched Griff using Primal Druid. Pretty great. So this is how he turns his creatures into ramp spells. Sacrifices it. He'll get a land off the Druid and then draw a card off the Griff. Yeah, gaining a mana advantage and also getting some pressure on the table. This is what Todd wants to be doing. I think he firmly wants to be the aggressor in this matchup. Presents over to Hagen. Not, and you see an Emrakul in Todd's hand. Not shabby. His hand is Kozilek's Return, Emrakul. Only two cards for Delirium in his graveyard. Hasn't really had any chance to build that. Hagen's side. Now that Elvish Visionary is holding down the fort, he's going to fire off of some explosive vegetation. Unfortunately, no good attacks for the Visionary. It's usually pretty good at chipping in. Yeah, that 3 4 is in the way, but he'll find something to do with it. Picks his two lands, and now we go to Todd's turn. Vegetation, though, is actually an excellent card in this matchup because mm. it, it is at its heart a ramp mirror and a plus two. Todd doesn't actually have any of those in the main. Frequently when you cast Explosive Vegetation out of the Crush deck, you just want to double island. It's possible that Hagen's trying to cast three green spells on the same turn, but because the deck is so heavy on Nissa's Pilgrimage, you usually just want to leave the forest in the deck. So for his turn, Todd plays Land 6 and Vessel of Nascency, and this should have Hagen concerned. Vessel of Nascency can really give you a discounted Emrakul. Yeah, and you've seen it with these Team Emerge decks, eight lands often is the key. They'll play an, a Shrine of the Forsaken Gods, they'll have five card types in the graveyard, and then boom, it's Emrakul. We see our Vessel, he's got Sorcery, Creature, Enchantment in the yard. He bins Grapple. This is it, yeah, land instant, five card types. He's got a Shrine that's going to make eight mana. Yeah, it's Emrakul next turn. This is bad news. 
So Hawkins has got to try to find a way to make himself Emrakul proof. We haven't really seen the contents of the hand, so it's unclear how impactful the Emrakul really is. He does have a, cop a main deck copy of Olamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, so he kind of wants to not leave himself on 10 mana for an Emrakul turn. What I liked about Todd's turn there is he cracked the Vessel main phase in case he found something like Pilgrim's Eye that he would need. But now he go to Hagen's turn. Untaps with those six lands after the vegetation. You see he has his big ramp spell in hand. Nissa's Renewal at the ready. He could ramp up to some large numbers. Mm -hmm. And that's a one of in the deck, and that takes him straight from six to nine on its own, and a land puts him at ten. Plays Blighted Woodland. Yeah, he has a lot of ramp spells, in case <laughs> you were wondering. Nissa's Renewal goes to 24, finds three more basics. Well, let's do it. I suspect that this one should find three islands. So he wants to max out on blue. It's mostly just that you have four Nissa's Pilgrimage, and you want to have forests left over. He does take a forest here, but he does get two islands to the one forest. An Elvish Visionary hits the graveyard. He did so much this game, but well, his time's done. Single-handedly demanded a Kozlex return from Todd. And here's the Emrakul from Todd. He'll hit for three, Hagen down to 21. Didn't bring back the Kozlex return, not really a point in that, but he'll get <laughs> Hagen's next turn. We untap. It's Den Protector, Den Protector, Crush of Tentacles, and Part the Water Veil, all available for Hagen. So Todd is able to just cast Crush without triggering the Surge and then cast Den Protector's face up. That's pretty significant. There's a couple things that Todd can do to mess Jacob up. Yeah, so he leads with the non-search crush, double face-up, den protector. Unfortunately, part of the water veil does not target, so Todd couldn't do something like steal a turn, but this is spewing a ton of Hoggins value, and Todd has got Emrakul back in his hand now. So what do we have? We have crush on nothing. It bounced Todd's Emrakul. Along with One the den protector. Riff. Yep. He's debating if he wants to play the second. Yeah, it looks like the play. Hey, confirmation's out. There's a, just a, a judge question on what happened here. And I believe that's Skyline Cascade, right? This, I love this Crush deck. It plays so many <laughs> great cards. Yes, yeah, so the Skyline Cascade, not very significant here. It stops a creature from untapping. Doesn't tap the creature, mind you. That would be an exceptional land. So the issue here, and this is a big one, is whether or not the judge is going to have to rule here on whether or not he played the second Den Protector, because Todd's actually dead if he plays it. Um, it would be, right, uh, wait, part, part the Water Veils makes a 6-6, six, six, so it would be 10 and then 10. So Todd sure. does not play the second one. All right. Yeah. <laughs> like, that would no, not, I will not kill myself. Hold that, on. That would not be good to do that. And part the Water Veil does exile on, res on resolution, so there's going to be no way that uh, Jacob is able to use the Den Protector to rebuy that. Sure. Now he can use the Den Protector to get back his Crush of Tentacles, then use his Crush of Tentacles to get back his two Den Protectors. Oh, this deck's so cool. So many nonsense plays that just beat people. Oath of Nyssa was the draw from Hagen. Oh, I can do that with Crush of Tentacles? Oh, this is so good. It's another combo. Over on the backup match, Ted Felicetti takes game one on the draw over Ooh. Shaheen Sarani. This guy. Looking for an upset against this Esper Master. This guy's great. We're going to see more of him this year. So there's some question of whether you want to cast the water, the uh, part of the water veil with Awaken before. Emrakul comes down, Todd will eventually would just be able to make you attack into the Emrakul. Yeah, if he draws another part of the Water Veil, he wins the game by doing it. Yeah. Here's the nine mana, animate Skyline Cascade. Seems like it's worth a shot. All right, 6-6 six, six land. He leaves the green up for an Oath. Fair enough. Swings eight, Todd to 12. Oath of Nyssa, the post-combat play. Jacob does get another turn, but he doesn't have enough damage just yet. It looks like he misses. You find that last card, if you don't recognize it, it's because it's a one of sight beyond sight in Hagen's deck. That's just 
It's a rebound card drawer from Dragons of Tarkir. There's a reason there's only one in the deck. And what Hagen wouldn't give to have one of his lands be a Lumbering Falls. Right. Dam Protector face down for Hagen. Now, Hagen wants to use his Dam Protector to get something that he can just cast that wouldn't be able to be messed up by Todd's Emrakul. Yeah, what's well, pretty interesting, the green-blue crush deck, one of the things I'm noticing from this game, you can Emrakul him, and it's not that good. Yeah, a lot of the stuff is hard to mess up, and Todd had the option to get rid of some of Jacob's value. You know, he cast the crush, didn't do anything, one face-up den protector, but he couldn't cast the second face-up den protector because it would have killed him. So Jacob plays out his hand, has the face-down den protector. Todd draws, and it just goes back to Emrakul, the promised end. Kozilek's trigger return, Emrakul, extra turn trigger. So Jacob's going to lose his den protectors. Before that happens, though, he's going to flip up his the den protector. We'll see what he gets with it. Got Crush of Tentacles, Elvish Visionary, Nissa's Renewal. He'll take the Crush back. It's not that appealing. You know, you don't want to bounce no. the Emrakul yeah, again. Yeah, you bounce the Emrakul. With the way the sequence is playing out, the Kozlex Return is going to get rid of the Den Protectors. Todd will be able to force the 6 6 land to attack into his Emrakul, just eat that that way, and leave Jacob with nothing. If Jacob gets back the Crush, Todd might make him play it again. Right. <laughs> Which is. <laughs> Not good. Mm -hmm. And then he could cast the Oath of Nyssa and find nothing. Yeah, so he got back Elvish Visionary. He had to get back a card that Todd couldn't make him screw up. Mm -hmm. That one always draws a card. It's reliable. Sacrifices Blighted Woodland on his own turn before Todd makes him sacrifice it. Getting, getting rid of all the potential bad plays that Todd could make him do. <laughs> Except for the one where he attacks a 6-6 six, six and do a 13-13. Yeah, that one's not going to be as good. Can't do anything about that. We go to Hagen. Picks up basic forest, so all we're going to see this turn is that attack. And we'll be going to Hagen's uh, regular turn here. Right. No Yava Maya Coast to ping at Hagen's life total. You got to think if you're Todd, do you want him to play the Visionary or not? Yeah, potentially you could make him cast something that's not very effective. Say if he draws Den Protector, you could make it way worse. Yeah, he'll cast it. Send to sleep was the draw. Okay, well, Jacob <laughs> will send his own Visionary to sleep. He, he made that card worse, though its value is not... Terribly yeah. high to begin with. Can't actually hit Emrakul, but a draw from Jacob. And he'll pass. Todd gets a real turn. And it's just a two-turn clock here. With Elder Deep Fiends, it's not bad. Here comes Emrakul. 13 damage puts Jacob down to eight. And the Deep Fiend gives Todd protection against part the Water Veil from Hagen because it can tap it on one turn and then block it on the extra turn. see seven lands. That's eight mana in play for Todd. He can just cast the Deep Fiend. There are no counter spells in the main for Jacob. Things look good for Todd Anderson. He'll just pass the turn. Mm -hmm. He's lets Todd Jacob draw, just holding up Deep Fiend mana, and game one goes to Todd Anderson. Team or emerge. Yeah, and Hagen, he drew a second send to sleep, and you know, as we said, this is not the matchup for that card, so things will get better uh, post sideboard, but yeah, Todd able to take that game. Impressive stuff, and a, a lot of stuff had to go right. This matchup, as we mentioned before, does not look good for Todd. He had to be on the play, Played Primal Druid, had an early Wretched Griff, then immediately had an Emrakul on mm -hmm. curve, and even then, he almost lost. Right. So put Jacob on the play, have Todd miss any one of those things, and I just don't know. You have Jacob draw another part of the Water Veil. All right, well, we're going to look at the sideboards here. So starting with Jacob Hagen, Green Blue Crush. You mentioned before he's got a lot of cards that, I don't know, look like Send to Sleep. Um, <laughs> don't do too much. Oath of Nyssa. I don't. Elvish Visionary. Um, what? Yeah. No, that no, one's that one, great. That one did nothing. <laughs> that one. 
Uh, but he's got some good stuff in the sideboard that can replace those and will be good in this matchup. Yeah, two Lone from the Past, two Clip Wings, two Void Shatter, one Summary Dismissal, two News Constrictor, four Jaddy Offshoot, two Dispel. Jaddy Offshoot uh, actually worse than Send to Sleep, so that one's not for this matchup. But he does have the Summary Dismissal, which is great. The two Void Shatter, which are very good. Learn from the Past that can uh, target Todd's Graveyard, make that Emrakul kind of stuff impossible. Some argument for one or two Dispels, because it, it can mess with Todd's Grapple plan. Uh, that one is less good than the other ones, though. But I can see an argument for one Dispel. What about something like Clip Wings? You can kill an Emrakul. You sure could. Um, I, you, have, you sound like you have no interest. I, I personally am disinterested. I could see somebody go for something like that, because the Emrakul is the way that Todd's closing a lot of the games that he does end up winning. But I think that planning to fail step one and try to win anyway is just a bad objective and strategy in yeah. general. It is a... I guess what I'd say is, it, it, I agree. I think it's a bad strategy. But there's a lot of cards in Jacob's deck that are worse strategies. And, you know, Oath of Nyssa, Visionary, Send to Sleep, it might make it in just because... Well, the thing about the bar is pretty low. The thing about his deck is just a lot of cogs, right? So, yeah. for as much as Elvis Visionary is ineffective as a permanent, just drawing a card, getting through his deck, finding his business—that's so important. That right. he really wants to have this card. Also, if you have multiple Elvis Visionaries, when you cast your crush, crush of tentacles, that's pretty good. You're drawing more cards, so that's actually a very functional card, just in any iteration of this deck. So maybe that is good then. Send to sleep, however, is terrible. It has to get out of this deck. Yeah, that seems really bad. Even Oath of Nyssa here, I'm pretty medium on. He, he doesn't. None of the creatures are his good cards. Sure. So we'll see how they board it. Over on Todd's side, it's a it's a pretty peculiar matchup. So not a lot of his cards do anything. But I'll let you run through them. Yeah, we have one Ishkana Graph Widow, two Jay's French Prodigy, one Elder Deep Fiend, one Ulamogus He's his Hunger, one Lash Weed Lurker, two Explosive Vegetation, two Clash of Wills, one Nissa Basswood Seer, one Den Protector, two Gnarlwood Dryad, one Coax from the Blind Eternities. Um, uh, Jace can help him filter his draws. It's very specific stuff that Todd's trying to do in this matchup. So I like Jace a good amount. The extra Elder Deep Fiend, as I've been saying, the Deep Fiend games are really more often how he's winning. Um, Ulamog's okay. I think it's a little too expensive here. Lashweed Lurker can reset Jacob's draws. That one's decent, not great. There's no Planeswalkers or what have you. You can use explos Explosive Vegetation to more proactively try to defend. I like that one. Yeah, I like that one too. And the two Clash of Wills can really slow Jake down. It's less good than just having the gate, but I think it's worth experimenting with. I mean, there's a lot of cards that are worse, right? I mean, he's got these returns. Those are probably bad. Wretched Griff is not great. Mm -hmm. uh, Ishkana's not great. Um, he might even go toward Jace. I mean, he's got some... It's really about Deep Fiends and Emeralds. Sure. All right, players need to get ready for game number two here. Todd Anderson up a game. In our backup feature, we have Ted Felicetti up a game, maybe setting up really the classic finals. We have Teamer, Emerge, and Bant Company both up. Their opponent's not what you'd expect. Green, Blue, Crush, and Esper Control. <laughs> but we get ready for that. This is our last event of the season. And, you know, when rotation comes around, a lot of times I'm looking to fill out some of my... My commander decks, my more casual products. Uh, we have a sale right now, as we do every week, going on StarCityGames.com. It's the weekly sale. Right now we have hundreds of singles listed at 99 cents. So a lot of those cogs maybe a good time to fill out a lot of your more casual decks. That sale ends tomorrow morning, though, at 10.59 Eastern Time. So that would be just before 8 o'clock over on the West Coast. So you're going to want to pick up those this evening. And stay tuned at StarCityGames.com. We switch the sale every week. Jacob will be on the play for this game. Probably several cards in Jacob's deck that you can find for 99 cents. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you probably, some of them you can get when they aren't on sale for 99 cents, cause, but <laughs> absolutely agree. <laughs> Jacob, for the second game in a row, is on a mulligan to six. Todd has kept his seven, though. I, I know I said it before. Ramp is a deck that you, you really don't want a mulligan with. Yeah, you're not wrong. And Jacob has trimmed on Anticipate. He only has three of those, so that hurts his mulligan percentages slightly. Okay. The two mana spells are really the most important stuff in the deck when you're mulliganing. Just give you those redraws. Make sure you hit your third land and start casting Nissa's Pilgrimage. Jacob looking at the six, a bit of a shake of his head. You'd said before, the hardest part about the green-blue crush deck is hitting its third land drop. It's where its fail rate is the highest. Yes. Once you get there, your deck is very good at making every land drop beyond that and taking advantage of your mana advantage. Yeah. There is no two-mana ramp spell in the format. There's a ton at three and four, and Jacob's playing them all. 
This is a window where the Vancouver Mulligan does benefit decks like this, of course. You get to give that one extra card to try to find that land drop on time. Jacob has kept on six, scryed to the bottom, starts off on Skyline Cascade. I believe the issue is that his hand is a two land hand with both lands making only blue mana. It's a real problem for the Nissa's Pilgrimage deck. Yeah, I mean, if he draws, he has one more turn to draw this forest. Todd, green, green, gather the pack. Jacob can hit the the forest, though. He, he's got a lot of plays. He'd sell his Visionary, maybe a Nissa's Pilgrimage, but he's going to need it. And Todd flips over four cards and finds Elder Deep Fiend right exactly where he needed it. That's the card he wants. Can Jacob escape the fairway? Boom, Forest. He gets to play Magic. Okay. Does he have Pilgrimage too? That would be fantastic. Uh, maybe not the Pilgrimage. Yeah, no, he does. I was saying he has the Nissa as well. So Jacob, just in the nick of time, hits the, hits the Forest and gets to play. Second okay. Forest and another one in his hand. That was the big sweat for the majority of games. I believe he has explosive vegetation at the ready as well. He'll be able to start getting his engine humming. Uh, for Todd, the question is, does he have his hands that are actually advantages in this matchup? Can he get an aggressive deep fiend going? Yeah, I mean, once... Jacob's deck's so good at creating card advantage, he's gonna. F it's not even going to feel like he ever mulliganed. Mm -hmm. Todd, third forest plays Pilgrim's Eye. This is a much slower start than he had last time. And and three forest means there will not right. be a turn four Elder Deep Fiend. Yeah, there's no even Yavamaya Coast. There's Deep Fiends in his hand, but he just can't cast it. And Jacob, land, 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 land. Here's explosive vegetation. Island, island. Has another forest in his hand from last turn, so he's going to ramp from three to seven. Mm -hmm. And we saw him grab two islands that time. That is the typical play pattern yeah. for vegetation out of this deck. Yeah. So the one, two, four, seven for Jacob, and eight next turn. He's just getting them higher and higher on mana count. <laughs> See, and this has renewal, I believe, in his hand. Yeah, he's just going to get all the lands. Summary dismissal as well. Todd's in some trouble. He's going to cast Traverse. Look at his graveyard. He's got land, enchantment, sorcery. No delirium just yet. Finds another blue source. Mm -hmm. Hits too many lands off of that gather to be delirious just yet. Finds an island, plays it, swings for one. Yeah, Todd's deck's not doing what he wants it to do right now. He'll pass. He has... He already had one island, though, right? He mm -hmm. got it off the Pilgrim's Eye. He has both shown Hagen the second island and the Deep Fiend, so Hagen knows that uh, if he thinks he can lose to that, he can leave up this summary dismissal mana this turn. Right. I, I kind of like another play where Hagen, if he just ramps hard enough, say he plays plays a land and then casts Nessa's Pilgrimage. Todd can't, might not even <laughs> be able to Clash of Wills it. And then at that point, like, what good's a Clash of Wills when Jacob has 1,000 lands? Mm -hmm. And then it's just the Deep Fiend being a 5-6 that matters at that point. The tapping four lands won't matter. Nissa's Pilgrimage. Or Nissa's Renewal. Does it work? Does Todd counter? No. Here comes three more lands. Jacob to 26. Mm -hmm. Todd's counter spells. Uh, Clash of, I'd be very surprised if Clash of Wills matters. Mm -hmm. Elder Deep Fiend doesn't even matter. It doesn't tap out Jacob. He's got... What, <laughs> 10 lands? Right, and Hagen just played face up in the Clash of Wills. Uh, clash for two would have got him there. Uh, so Todd kind of forced him to respect that, and Jacob says, nah, you don't have it. See, this ramp deck gets progressively more. His land count on turns has gone 1, 2, 4, 7, 11. It's actually a progression here. It should be 16 next turn. So he's going plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going it's great. to guess that next turn Jacob will not be ending the turn with 16 mana. Yeah, I mean, the, the the progression's like, you, you can't keep it going. Then we'd be at 22, and that's just <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> but it's some pretty impressive stuff from the ramp deck. This is just so many lands. Yeah. And Todd untapping here. Pilgrim's Eye looking unimpressive. He only finds one land and only puts it in his hand. <laughs> well... They're Let me show you what these other cards do. It looks like they're playing different formats here. One of them is playing Cube, and the other one is playing Popper Cube. Remember how two turns ago, or three turns ago, we were saying with Jacob, if he doesn't draw Forest here, he's done. And yeah. then, right? That <laughs> and then just, he did draw Forest, oh and no, <laughs> does it look good? Uh, Todd's got a chance, so he's going to go ahead and use Delirium to cast Traverse the Ur Ufenvolt. He now has five types in his yard. Going to get a second Elder Deep Fiend. 
So I, I like this. It looks like he's going to try to tempo Jacob out. Mm -hmm. But as you know, sometimes he actually never gets another turn from this board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is when the part the water veil start going. Todd's going to go ahead and upkeep. Emerge Elder Deep Fiend tapping, oh no, four lands. <laughs> it's it's it, just it gross. Takes him off of enough mana to awaken a part of the Water Veil. Okay. But Jacob's at 25. Not to cast a part of the Water Veil with a little mana left over, mind you, but to awaken it anyway. I love this green blue deck. This is great. It it's does tap him off of all of his green mana. Um, Jacob has the option to just activate the Blighted Woodland in response. Yeah, so it looks like Todd's going for all the forests. Yeah, and then right. that way he'll be able to have green sources on his main phase through a second copy of Deep Fiend. So yeah. So I would like to see a woodland activation here, I think. Well, it will put them into play tapped, so he will activate. Yeah, yeah, not this turn, but oh, okay. for the second Deep Fiend. And once he has six forests, which he does. <laughs> And Hagen has a Void Shatter in hand, but She's he doesn't need to fight it. over a 5-6. This is now up to 12 lands is Jacob Hagen. And he has that Elvish Visionary to chump block. It's just an all-star. <laughs> it's just this deck is so well metaed, right? Yes. It's just you, the Team Rimmer deck is so powerful and so complicated and winning stuff. You watch this matchup and you say, man, this green-blue crush deck's great. It's just... Yeah, in order for a deck like this to really be a consistently dominant deck in your format, R&D kind of has to stop printing creatures that cost one or two <laughs> mana. <laughs> like, it's not hard to conceive of a deck that's going to destroy this deck. But yeah. the slower your opponent's <laughs> deck is, the better. So Jacob's nut draw is turn two visionary, turn three Nissa's pilgrimage. And that's not even an exaggeration. It's the best draw he has in the deck. <laughs> okay. Oh, and summary dismissal on Todd's Emrakul. That's huge. So, no Amrakul, no extra turn, big play by Hagen. We do have a result from our backup table. Shaheen, the Esper Master, does finally get taken down by Bant Company. On its farewell tour, Bant might go out with a bang. It is Ted Felicetti onto the finals in straight games, two to zero. Looking to take one more trophy on its way out the door, I see. And Hawkins' hand, he does just still have a couple of ramp spells, so he has to get some business going. Yeah, he has to have something. I believe he has ramp spell into crush of tentacles, and in then void shatter, and I think he can cast all these things on the same <laughs> turn. I mean, yeah, he's almost out of his lands. Um, he's, he's got another explosive vegetation, a nice different art one. I like that. Um, <laughs> he started the turn with 12 basics. He has 16 total, so we're not out yet. But we're, we're close. And S once the deck's out of basics, comes pretty easy to draw gas. I can draw anything else. He gets his last two islands, seven of them now in play. Saves the forest in his deck. Just for the now, I was going to say in case he draws Nessa's Pilgrimage, but he already has it. All the basics are out of the deck. You see, forest into play, one into hand. I don't think he's got another. <laughs> I know he has one. Okay, one more correction. He has seven in play to hand. That is all of the basics. And I thought we might see Ramp Spell crush Void Shatter from here. I imagine that Jacob will just be leaving up the Void Shatter. Puts the land into play, yeah. passes the turn. Without the mana to recast the Elvish Visionary immediately, the crush is less exciting. What I love about this deck is, remember how we said how Todd's counter spells not negate, but it's Clash of Wills? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, you'll need to make... Todd, <laughs> Jacob, pay like 20 <laughs> extra for that to matter. Todd counting up for Emrakul. He has six types in the yard for Delirium. Not much. Yeah, land, sorcery, enchantment, instant, creature, artifact. So Emrakul costs seven. He's got, you have to pay one more than he was tapping there. Judge call on that. Todd miscounting his card types, I believe. So we'll I'll pause here. The players figure out just a procedural line here. And it's just going to be hard. You look at Todd's deck. I think he has his Ulamog and his Emrakul in hand. His largest, best threats are all there. But I can't help but thinking that I'm not sure if they matter. Well, Ulamog 
is very insignificant on this table. Hagen's not presenting any permanence that Todd needs to deal with, and any permanence that he does exile, Jacob's not going to miss. Yeah, it'll be a three for one, and that's fine by Jacob because two of those cards are lands, and that's not really a card anymore. Right. There's some level of uncertainty yeah. as to how good Emrakul is. In the dark, I'm saying better than Ulamog. Yeah. Unclear if good enough. Well, what Todd can hope for here is Jacob Hagen has one card remaining in his hand, I believe. So he actually has, and it's Void Chatter. He, he hasn't drawn away to win yet. Mm -hmm. And Does he doesn't have, to have find that, that much card draw. He's got a ton of ramp. But you look at the actual cards that matter. They're very thin in this deck. He's got an, one Ulamog, four Den Protectors. Okay, those are great. But a Sight Beyond Sight, three Part the Water Veils, four Crushes. That's it. Mm-hmm. Todd goes for Emrakul. Jacob will Void Shatter it. But the trigger still happens, so Todd will get Jacob's turn. He swings with the Deep Fiend. Jacob, no blocks. He'll go to 20. We untap, and Jacob's got part the Water Veil and the, the Forest. Draws Elvish Visionary. Th there's Todd can't make him mess this up. He actually... He can prevent you know? the Awakening, which is significant. Draws a card of Visionary, draws a job of Maya Coast. Now, what Todd wanted to draw off that Visionary was a counter spell, so we can just counter the part of the Water Veil. Yeah. Though he is not leaving Jacob with much. Two turns, sure. He has to find something on those turns, though. It was always one of the things, and he plays the, the Coast and takes the damage, that you always worry about with Emrakul. If you actually get nothing and don't do anything relevant with the turn, you actually did, it was like an Elvish Visionary for your opponent. <laughs> no, that's a real thing. He's, yeah. It's card disadvantage. You gotta make them give you at least one card worth of value. And Jacob picked up a Den Protector. Yeah, so Jacob, this is the second. He actually gets three turns in a row this game. Uh, the first one was an Emrakul turn. Now it's his own turn, and he Todd made him cast part the Water Veil. So the next turn's also Jacob's. Yeah, and yeah, since the Emrakul trigger was turn was not really detr detrimental, it was kind of what Jacob would have done with that turn. Difference is he didn't awaken a land. Jacob plays land, says go. Todd just points back at him and says, No, 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 you. <laughs> Does Jacob get back a spell? Does he have anything good enough worth getting back? No, he's holding it, and I like that. Mm -hmm. Presumably because there's a Void Shatter in his yard. And a Summary Dismissal. What This deck's cool. So not only that, if he draws something like Crush of Tentacles, it's actually just insane right now. Mm -hmm. Then he can really start going off with the Den Protector. Not to mention the two yeah, Elvish Visionaries. I know, I know. When I said it, I was like, you're going to go there, and I'm going to look dumb because I said they're bad, and then he's going to win because of them, and you it's going to be horrible. You knew what you were getting I, into yeah. when you started talking about Elvish Visionary. Ooh. Jacob plays Nyssa. He fetched all his forests. Yeah, and because his land, <laughs> when Todd took his turn, was Yavamaya okay. Coast, Todd actually played it, and that yeah. stopped him from flipping the Nissa too. And that's that's the one Yavamaya Coast in the deck. That really hurts, Jacob. Yeah. Uh, he would have much appreciated a Planeswalker there. <laughs> Only two Nissas in his deck, but no cards in hand. He's got the Den Protector that both players know about and there's a void shatter in the yard so Jacob's okay here right one crush should just be great <laughs> but he needs it pretty soon Todd's got a lot more Eldrazi coming yeah a swing for five puts Jacob to 14 yeah it's on a three turn clock sort of he has some chump blockers live I, I like how he's been racing Todd back 14 each actually <laughs> Todd will play Nissa's pilgrimage that one's not worth getting a counter spell back no way. It's funny. A lot of times you do stuff like end step and a den protector. But when you're a deck with a comical amount of mana, you start playing things far more straightforward. You don't do the den protector until you're about to play the spell because what's two more mana? Yeah. Of the resources that Hagen is maybe shy on, mana is not one of them. Todd's hand, Wretched Griff, Emrakul, or not Emrakul, Ulamog, the other Titan, passes. He has Elder Deep Fiend, too. Draw from Jacob. It's probably going to be good. There's only five lands left in his deck. I can tell you right now, he didn't top deck a forest. Swings the team. Todd going to try to make a play. It's going to be Elder Deep Fiend. He's going to emerge it from Elder Deep Fiend. And this will force action on that den, den protector. Tapping Hagen off all these blue mana. I suppose I can just tap it all.
This is after the attacker has been declared, but before blockers. Good chance that this one's going to be met by Den Protector, Void Shatter. Well, Den Protector is going to flip, and it gets back Void Shatter. But the question is if Jacob casts it. He does. But I wasn't certain. You know, he might have let his Protector go. Mm -hmm. well, you kind of want to leave it on the table because it makes Top Deck and Crush actually really good. Well, how about this? He's got Todd at 7. Yeah, also Passes. chipping in for three, yeah, not bad. That's it's lethal next turn. Todd has to do something. So you have did he keep any of the sweepers in the deck? This is not exactly how I thought Jacob was gonna win of ramp to seventeen lands, then play one ones. Um but it might work. Well, Todd found his Ulamog mana. Here is the ceaseless hunger hitting everything but the Elvish Visionaries. They're exiled. Here's Jace for Todd tapping out. He'll say go. A lot of things could go wrong for Todd, but Jacob's going to have to draw one. Jacob can't have that many cards total left in his deck. Yeah, the last draw was his second copy of Nyssa. That's why we didn't see him play it. It was a pretty subpar Ugh, draw for him. That's horrendous. Now, though, he does have Crush of Tentacles. It's a little late because he'd be bouncing his opponent's Ulamog, but the thing is we might even see him do it anyway. Mm-hmm. Nissa's the play. Yeah, he's going to surge Crush of Tentacles. Yeah, there's, there's no might about it. He has to commit to this line, otherwise he's just getting killed. So everything's bounced. Jacob gets an Octopus. And the first Ulamog trigger significantly changed the game state. If Todd casts it again, it's going to matter a lot less. Yeah, gets an 8-8, and he gets to recast all those Visionaries for more cards. I suppose he still has enough mana that if this Visionary draws apart the Water Veil, he can just start going. He can just win the game on the spot. Yeah, draws... Okay, draws Lumbering Falls. So now he's going to play Nyssa because he has a land. Yes. Here's the 2-2. Two, two. This is all on one turn. So much mana. Lumbering Falls flips. Just needs one part the Water Veil to win the game. I'll say, I don't know. He's a land short now, but right. still. Even if he finds it, though, good chance he's able to find a way to close the game with an extra turn. His deck scales really well with these resources. Nissa will go to one. It's going to make a 4-4 no card off the top. It gives him another permanent that makes it easy to cobble together a lethal yeah. attack through Ulamog. Elvish Visionary draws a card, and he passes. Yeah, you know what? You're right. He's just, she's just going to try to turn sideways. Why not? Todd's going to have to show that he can win from here. He looks like Todd may have picked up Traverse, though. He could get another Emrakul, start going back to back on that plan, maybe? Yeah, the third Emrakul. The game is three. <laughs> Forest. All right, here's Ulamog. Exiling Octopus and Nyssa. And Jace and Vessel. So Jacob has an Ashaya, a Lumbering Falls, and two Visionaries. Not Can't push seven damage right away. One part the Water Veil? Yep, he can currently push two. Part the Water Veil would make it eight. He still has the, um, or no, he cast it, so. Visionary draws a top card. Top deck Visionary is what I was looking at. I think he might have another Crush. That's that, also pretty good. That's his plan. He's going he's gonna to bounce the Ulamog every single turn, and that's how he's going to win. And you'd think I'm joking by how I said it, but I'm not. <laughs> And he can bounce the Ulawog, have some redraws off a of Visionary. Could still even just chip in for three with the Lumbering Falls now? Yeah, bounces everything, gets rid of his own 4-4. Vessel, I believe it's gone to, is just return all creatures. Non-land permanence. Okay, so Vessel's back to Todd's hand. He gets another Octopus. So much mana left. Yeah, you're not wrong. Okay, Elvish Visionary. If he just finds part the Water Veil on one of these, I think he wins. And if he even... Ends have to up, if he draws terribly and just has to find a way to reset the board again, he gets a chip shot in with the Lumbering Falls. It puts Todd at four. If he gets able to do that again, that can put him at one and make it so the Elvish Visionaries are lethal. There's a lot of ways for yeah. him to actually close the game from here. He's got four Elvish Visionaries. He's got all of them in his hand. He's going to keep trying them. Remember, if he hits part the Water Veil, he wins. Mm -hmm. He hasn't yet. Nissa's Pilgrimage, that's kind of a dud. That's less good. And with this little mana, I like just connecting with the Lumbering Falls from here. He's going to go for the, he thinks he's, uh, he's going to go for the fourth visionary. Well, that's all of them. Finds Den Protector. And uh, not morphing that I like because he knows that Ulamog is likely to be coming. Still trying to part the water veil just once. Oath of Nyssa in hand. 
Den Protector. Misses Pilgrimage. That one's pretty bad. He'll pass. Todd gets another turn. He spent his last two turns casting Ulamog, but it's not making him win. Counting cards in Jacob's deck. That's become, that's, that's where we are. Sure, why not? Jacob's drawn a lot of them, but there's still a fair amount left. 19. So one Ulamog attack wins the game now for Todd. Mm -hmm. He'd just play as Hall of the Bandit Lord, and he'd be set. <laughs> there's, there's a standard legal land that does that. Yeah, he's playing his, his Hanvir Battlements. <laughs> Cracks a vessel, finds eh, some lands, but gets a forest. Plays it. Ten more mana. It's Ulamog. He was looking for Emrakul there, but didn't find her. Mm-hmm. He's going to go ahead and get the Octopus and the Elf. I think if there weren't four mana up, he would have gotten the Lumbering Falls with it. Right. You can just give that Hexproof in response. Yeah, you, you, it can use itself for the mana because it doesn't have to attack. Mm -hmm. Now Jacob and taps again with about a 1,000 lands. He just needs a way to win one Water Veil. If he parts it, he'll win. <laughs> He's got a Den Protector, too. So even if he doesn't, his backup plan is... Crush of Tentacles in the Ulamog again. <laughs> it's just pretty gross. Yeah, he's able to get in a couple points on this turn and then set that up on top of it. You think he wants to suicide some of these visionaries for a couple points, or is he really just waiting till one part gets it all? He could just aggressively continue to dig for part. That also plays here. He only has 19 cards in his library. He's got three of them. I mean, yeah, he's, he's going to find one. Den Protector, face down. Flip it up. Get Trush Crush of Tentacles. Start over. Bounce everything. Five lands. Yeah, Todd. Yeah, make that a 3-2. Ulamog, for the third time, is bounced. Jacob picks up all these cards. Gets most the decks, Octopus. Most decks can't really withstand two casts on Ulamog. This is pretty crazy stuff. Nine lands in play for Jacob, so he has one chance here at part the Water Veil off an Elvish Visionary. It's free, and if he finds it, he wins. He'll draw. Is it part? Did he do it? No, but it's Void Shatter, so that's pretty good anyway. Maybe that'll be good enough. He even. can finally make it so Ulamog won't be on the table. So, no win this turn for him, but he'll see what he wants to do. How about Visionary again? One card too late. Finds the part the Water Veil. All right. Well, you should be able to wrap things up next turn. Plays the Skyline Cascade. Passes the turn. He's, so he's got a Void Shatter, and he's got the win next turn. This should be in good enough. And what I'm learning from this game, so this is, you know when I see Green Blue Crush, one of the thoughts I was wondering is if Todd gets to his late game, can he win? And I'm going to go ahead and put the answer as a resounding no. <laughs> it's looking a lot like no, especially post-sideboard when Jacob, he, we saw the yeah. summary dismissal on the early Emrakul. That was huge. Like Todd's draws have been good. Jake's have, Jacob's have been horrible. But I think Jacob's still going to get it. Gather the pack from Todd. Shows creatures. A Jace. Here's Emrakul. Todd will get to take it. Can have the Jace too if he'd like. Void Shatter at the ready in Jacob's hand. Todd has a full six cards still for Delirium. That's as big as he can go. He doesn't have the Kiora in his deck to make it to seven. Mm -hmm. Won't be able to do too much beyond casting the Emrakul anyway. No, it'll cost seven mana for Emrakul. And here's the here she is. She will be Void Shattered. Now, if Todd had a Clash of Wills there, he actually would have gotten it off. <laughs> yeah, that's something I was thinking about. But he doesn't. He will play Jace, though. Remember, he still has Jacob's next turn. I don't know what he does with it, but he'll get it. He does not cast part the water Either veil. Of those. But what does he do with them? I mean, there's two part the water veils in Jacob's hand. Yeah. How does he... He, can, he needs to take these wins away? He can deal with the octopus, but he can't deal with everything else. And since Jacob cast that summary to... Or the... the yeah. The counter spell, he doesn't have it to counter either of the time walks. It's just Todd continues to Emrakul every turn for the last six turns, I believe. Todd has either cast Ulamog or Emrakul, and it just doesn't work. The other, they're just not good enough here. Mm -hmm. But that's the best thing Todd can do. He's going to try to find something. 
though. I, I don't think I that don't that something is, is there. Counter spells. Cast part of the water bales, counter them. Yeah, this just isn't... This is a pretty neat game. Yeah, and you can't really den protector for crush and try to do that uh, because Todd's not picking up Emrakul again. It was countered. It's gone. It was void shattered. Todd doesn't cast and anticipate. Crush, oath, land. None of those are going to mess up these part of the water veils. I guess one thought is Todd was trying to think, could he make Jacob mill himself? Jacob's really low on cards in deck. Mm -hmm. Nothing like that. And even these cards that normally get stuff out of his deck that Nissa's Pilgrimage doesn't have anything he can find. Yeah. Well, puts him on the bottom, orders the crush first, takes Oath of Nissa. Todd's going to try for it. I'm just not sure I see the way... That he gets out of it. Mm -hmm. There's just there's no stitch wing scob. We saw, <laughs> well, yeah, against the Sultai emerge deck, we saw an Emrakul force that blue deck to discard all their cards in response to each other. Right. Yeah. No way out. We're going to three here. Jacob Hagen versus Todd Anderson. And the last thing that Todd did was cast one of those search spells. Just take a look at what's left in Hagen's deck, so you know exactly how he sideboarded. All right. That's pretty smart. So after a long game two for Green Blue Crush, we are back to game three. And Todd may already know the matchup and know how to play it. I'm really interested, having watched that half-hour game between them. Things are a lot more grim for Todd than it seemed at first. Once Jacob hits 10 lands, I'm not sure Todd can win anymore. Just right. e even if he gets to, you know, demonic tutor every turn. There's yeah, and I think that the games that Todd is really looking for are those early DPN games, and this game did not line up in a way that allowed Todd to do it, despite drawing an early DPN and a Pilgrim's Eye. The Pilgrim's Eye was cast off of three basic forests, so he couldn't curve into that very aggressively. Yeah, and once Jacob, what I said before, his lands went one to two to four to seven to eleven. Like once he got there, just Deep Fiend doesn't matter, nothing matters. And there was a sweat for Hagen, kept a two lander, had to find basic forest. And once he found that, cast, and this is Pilgrimage, cast Explosive Vegetation, and then the, the mana was not an issue. So what do you think? Does Todd's strategy then change? You know, maybe he has to try to ultimate a Jace. I mean, well, that's he, hard. He could go a little bit lower, bring in Gnarlwood Dryad. I mean, if he gets on turn one Gnarlwood Dryad on the play, turn two, gather the pack and mill a bunch of stuff, that might be worth 12 damage. Yeah. It's not the most consistent plan with only two copies. Yeah, no, it's kind of horrible, actually. Yeah, but <laughs> the longer the game goes, the more miserable that seems. But maybe it's what he's got. Yeah, Coax. I mean, if Jacob Void shatters, he can get stuff back. Sure. We'll be interested to see just what Todd can do. Players are going to get ready here for game number three. Todd will be back on the play. That's how he won game one. He did it off a very fast Emrakul. He got, I think it's more important. He got the Emrakul before Jacob had a million lands out. Mm-hmm. And uh, in, the, in the first sideboard game, we saw Summary Dismissal catch the first Emrakul that Todd tried to cast, and that was massive for Jacob. So this is our last open series here in Standard, but it's not the last chance that you're going you're gonna to get to play Standard, like maybe a deck like Green Blue Crush. Uh, it's game night somewhere, and all over the country, we have those being hosted by your local store, run in conjunction with StarCityGames.com. So free tokens and pins given away as prizes just for playing in the event you'd already be playing in anyway. September, we'll be giving away the Bone Shewer Giant. That is the 5-5 Giant Warrior that's a giant pup. He'll be giving away next month, our, we'll be giving away the Hedgehog Hog, which goes nice in the Tribal Atogs deck, or I guess your Tribal Hedgehog deck, depending on which one you play. Get signed up now, there was a store, and we can get you signed up in time for the November promo, which is going to be the Mole Warden, everyone's favorite life gain creature, everyone's favorite enchantment 2-1, or just cleric, or, you know, ground, cr like, ground mammal, same <laughs> time. I personally like the gopher more than the mole, the mole, but, you know, to each their own. You know, mole, moles are not a very widely celebrated animal. Yeah, you know, Fair enough. Find out a location near you or to get signed up at starsandygames.com slash game night. And I'd say we're giving them their moment in the sun, but moles are really not really about that. Their molement in the sun, would you even say? <laughs> I should have. 
Now I feel terrible about the thing I did say. For the third game in a row, Jacob, Mulligans to six. You know, it kind of makes sense. This is, I think, one of the dangers of the deck is that you said before it's third land or bust. So for a, you're a ramp deck that mulligans a lot. Blech. But it's very powerful. That's what you get in return. So start for Todd. Just two lands, Forest and Shrine. Jacob starts on a Lumbering Falls and Visionary. All right. His hand is flush with these excellent cards. Well, he's picked up a Explosive Vegetation that turn, and I believe has Nissa's Pilgrimage, so pretty perfect. Yeah, that's great. Todd casts Grapple, gets back a land. Most importantly, the land makes blue mana. He's going to counter those ramp spells. Or not. Pilgrim's Eyes the play. Yeah, not a ton in the way of counter spells for Todd's deck. Yeah, I think he has one of his two copies of Clash of Wills in hand. The question for Todd, and I know there's different theories on this, do you counter the first ramp spell or do you counter the Haymaker? It's really tough to counter the Haymaker. You're going to have some windows as the game progresses, but the first Nissa's Pilgrimage is often the most important thing that Jacob does. Well, especially with soft counters like Clash, if you don't counter the first one, you, you lose your opportunity. It's kind of in a, a, a two-level problem. The first is that Clash of Wills is a conditional counter. He has to dump a lot of mana into it. Jacob generates a lot of mana. The other is that he's very limited on counters, so he wants to counter something that matters. So, Todd swings for one with the Pilgrim's Eye. Plays an island. Four mana. It's going to be Lashweed Lurker putting Visionary on top of Jacob's deck. That is a hugely aggressive line. Yeah, it's not often that you put a redraw on top of your opponent's deck. She says, no, I just want a 5-4, whatever. I'm going to try to beat you up. That late game was horrible. Got to attack you with something. Jacob's going to just keep ramping. Here's Explosive Vegetation. He goes from 4 to 6. If he has his land drop, it'll be all the way up to 7. You see, the other thing about this is the Elvish Visionary is going to gain Jacob 5 life against this plan, which is already very ambitious. Gross. This is a very... I like the improvisation from Todd. It's very aggressive. As we go back to some attacks, it's going to be Lashweed Lurker for 5, Jacob to 14. Todd has 4 card types in Graveyard and Emmer Cool in hand, so he actually is building up toward the promised end. Okay. But you mentioned those Elvish Visionaries that I clearly maligned, and I apologize. They look great right now. It's about time. At least you can admit when you're wrong. Yeah, I mean, they're each 5 life draw card. This is, this is great. Here's one. Todd might even, Jacob might even play two. Draws Blighted Woodland. You see he has Nyssa, Anticipate, another Visionary. It's pretty good across the board for Jacob Hogg and Green Blue Crush. These were almost a six, and they just, gosh, do they not matter. <laughs> Here is Nyssa. Jacob hasn't even played a land yet. This is going to flip. And Todd has to counter that. He, yeah, Clash of Wills. Yeah, that, that Planeswalker is not insignificant, and the window to actually counter something is not long. Blighted Woodland. Oh, here's another Nissa. Now Jacob didn't make his land drop that. He had to make his land drop to play her, but next turn he'll have a Planeswalker. And I think it was a good target for Clash of Wills, but Todd ends up getting punished because Jacob drew both of his copies. I wonder, does Todd have Kozilek's returns in? It's pretty gross if he does. He'll swing for five, but Jacob's Elvish Visionary jumps right in the way. Jace for Todd. Land. Pass. He has, I believe, his other counter spell, but that's not going to matter too much. The Nissa's already in play, and she's going to make four fours. Mm -hmm. Jacob untapping with count him. Eight lands. Has not made his land drop yet. Ninth in hand. Blighted Woodland in hand. This is going like game two, or once Jacob starts getting into double digit lands, Todd's cards stop mattering. And it's only a small set of things that Jacob even has to play into Clash of Wills uh, with. Yeah, Todd only has so many lands. Mm -hmm. Nissa's going to attack. Free roll here, Todd, down to 18. <laughs> Love a good free roll. Todd does not have two blue mana for Elder Deep Fiend in this window. Now, he spent one of his islands on Jace. So here's El Forest. Now Nissa flips into the Sage Animist. A lot of good options. He can draw a card or he can make a blocker. Yeah, and he's not necessarily looking to trade with the Lashweed Lurker. He still has a uh, backup of an Elvish Visionary to buy some time on that front. See his hand. Looks like Elvish Visionary. Nissa's Pilgrimage. He'll plus the Nissa. Show Skyline Cascade. Blech. No one taps for Lashweed Lurker. Neat. He's got Crush of Tentacles and Anticipate as, rem as his remaining two cards. 
crush not too appealing right here. But that's only because Jacob's already far ahead. Yeah, in particular when you have the Lurker tapped down, you can reset the Jace a little bit. So it, one thing we do have to note, though, Todd has got four card types in his graveyard, six lands in play. If he plays another land, he'll go up to eight mana. If he discards another creature type, now he's online for Emrakul, and she is in his hand. Now, we've seen before in the last game, Todd cast Emrakuls and Ulamogs every turn and still lost. <laughs> but that's his deck's best trick, and he is on pace to do it. Yeah, and the uh, first Emrakul got countered in game two. If this one resolves, this, this looks to be significant. And this is Pilgrimage from Hagen. Three more lands. Deck's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and Todd's deck's very good. I mean, Team Emerge is a powerhouse of a deck. Todd's playing it great, but these cards just are not lining up right for him. Yeah. If he wants to win this match, he's going to have to have to have some negates on the board, and even then. Jacob restacking the land, saying go. Remember, Lurker's not untapping because of that cascade. So a draw for Todd Anderson. He has that second Clash of Wills in his hand, but that has become a dead magic card. It's going to be tough to derive any value out of that one. Still maybe able to get an Awoken part of the Water Veil. Vale. Maybe. So Pilgrim's Eye is Artifact and Creature. Grapple's instant. Pilgrimage is, he's got a sorcery in there, I believe is the last card. So four types, if he can loot, discard a land, and play a land for the turn, he'd need two lands to do it, then he's got Emrakul. I mean, he's playing it into a bunch of open mana, two of it's blue, I mean, there well, are. He can't just sit on his hands. He does not have the long game. Yeah, we learned that last game, that Todd loses when that happens. He's just going to play the forest, which makes him short for Emrakul. Now Jace will loot. Wretched Griff the draw. So he cannot cast the Promised End this turn. Didn't hit the right card type. Discards Clash of Wills, though to flip the Jace. And here is, yeah. So now he'll look at other lines that he could have. So sideboards are face up. Todd just has the two Clash of Wills and now Jacob knows that they're both spent. So now even if he were playing into the requisite mana, he knows he can just awaken apart the Water Veil. Vale. So there is a line that Todd could have had if he hadn't played. Oh, no. Never mind. He's still a mana short. There's no way to do it. I was going to say he could try to tra flash back the Traverse for another shrine, but he still want a short. So he'll minus three the Jace. Give his a Traverse the Ulfen Vault flashback. Can get any, really anything in his deck. You see him eyeing shrine, but... Yeah, he's already played a forest this turn. And now Todd's just kind of hoping to get another turn in this game. Other Deep Fiend is one of the ways he can buy it. He can tap Hagen off of mana to part with Awaken. He's not quite in range to do that plus four mana. Yeah, he, you see there's the Yabamaya Coast hiding there next to the island. So the, the Deep Fiend can be played immediately. But it would have to be using the Lashweed Lurker. He can't actually play it for eight. Hagen going to just keep rolling on. Here comes Blighted Woodland getting two lands. Island and Forest. So we look at this. It's 12 lands in play now for Hagen. He's into the double-digit territory. He's got one Lumbering Falls, and the Nissa's still alive. Remember that Lashweed Lurker couldn't even attack last turn because of Skyline Cascade. It's a two of in Hagen's deck. This is some great stuff. That rarely makes the cut as a one of in 40 card decks. Yeah, I was like, it's not even great there. <laughs> but here, that's it's pretty excellent. And Hagen lining up, you see, he's sorting into blue and green mana, draws for the turn. He's got a Crush in his hand and an Anticipate. Draws another Skyline Cascade. Now he's just just making Todd hate this game. <laughs> and Todd did not deep fiend him on upkeep. No, no real reason, right? 
You see Nissa Plussing showing summary dismissal. That's a very good draw. Yeah, I you can see it on Todd's face. It's going to be quite hard for him to play around. And there's no responding. Once Jacob flips the card, it's in his hand. Right. It's not like revealing it uh, as the top card of your library. He's revealing it as the card that he's drawing. Elvis Visionary draws Jacob a card. He's got 10 mana up. Cascades the Lurker again. He could Crush of Tentacles for an 8-8. He doesn't need to. And we are back where we are game two. Todd has all the cards in his deck that he could want. And it just doesn't look like it's going to matter. Yeah, and Todd tried to take this aggressive line with the Lash Weave Lurker, and it's being felled by some very mediocre comments. Elvish Visionary and Skyline Cascade. Lumbering Falls takes out the Jace. There was a chance there. Todd, on that last turn, had he drawn a land on the Jace, he could have cast Emrakul. I don't even know if that wins. Yeah, it's very unclear. Todd goes for Elder Deep Fiend. This is on Jacob's end step. Yeah, it's going to go ahead and emerge from Lashweed Lurker. And this can't even attack down... Well, he can. He can tap down the Visionary, so he can attack down the Nyssa. Yeah, he's attempting to tap three lands and Visionary. Now, both players know about this summary dismissal, so Jacob could counter it. But if he does, he might get Emrakuld, so he may let this one resolve. But if he gets Emrakuld and he has summary dismissal in his oh, hand, right. Todd okay. can just counter one of his spells. I think... So Jacob's getting a little punished here for attacking with the uh, Yeah, falls. yeah, he yeah. had to tap a bunch of mana to do that. No, there was enough blue that maybe it doesn't even matter, right? He still gets tapped off blue. Either way, Dismissal hits the Elder Deep Fiend, which means Visionary is not tapped. Because both the tap trigger and the Deep Fiend are countered. Right. So Todd will get an Emrakul the Promised End. Great card. Unsure if this is good enough. Yeah, we'll find out. This is where we were last game. Todd's going to untap. Taking Jacob's turn. Tons of lands, tons of spells. Even more lands in hand. Anticipate, Den Protector, Crush. Now in Jacob's hand. Todd is controlling this turn. What is the worst he can do? I bet he wishes that summary dismissal was still in his hand. Right. Uh, he can do the unsurged Crush of Tentacles and then cast a Den Protector. Um, that's going to be later down the road. Um, Find out if he has enough mana to activate the Lumbering Falls, run that into the Emrakul, and then do those things. All right. There's not like ways to kill anything, though, you know? There's no removal. There's no sweepers. No. You want to make... That's what you do against, say, you know, a control deck, a band. Yeah. He's really only... He's able to take Hagen off of some resources. He's not realistically able to take him off of all of his redraws. Yeah, so you want to get rid of the Crush, the Den Protector, the Falls. There's not enough mana to do all of it. I mean, maybe there is. Jacob's got 100 million creatures, but... He has a lot. If if he had actually unlimited mana, there's a bit more stuff that Todd could do. Visionary swings. Emrakul blocks. Nissa makes an Ashaya token. I don't know if that matters, because Todd's crushing it. But I like sending a message. <laughs> yeah, make a token, and then it dies. Good. <laughs> No surge. So Nissa's bounced, Ashaya's bounced and gone. Emrakul's back in Todd's hand. Doesn't not a huge fan of that part, but it's what Todd can do. Right. He'll cast Anticipate. Finds another crush, a pilgrimage, and a den protector. Todd was kinda hoping to and see two part the water bales and a different card that he could put in Jacob's hand, like a land. So he'll take Pilgrimage. Like, that doesn't do too much here. Jacob already has a million lands. Gonna cast Pilgrimage, cast Face Up, Den Protector. These are good plays. Yeah, the fail to find with the Pilgrimage, not very significant. Uh, face Up, Den Protector hurts him a little bit more. Yeah, plays Den Protector. Face Up is a 2-1. And is he gonna cast the Pilgrimage? No. Is there a reason to not cast that? I thought that the falls was tapped. Maybe I was reading that wrong. Okay. So now Jacob gets his own turn. 
And what did he draw? He's keeping the card to the side. I don't know if uh, signaling that's a big one. My read is part of the water veil, but I didn't see it. That's my physical if read. That's, that's my physical read of oh, the Oh, just situation. watching his body language? If well, I'm Todd, I think this card is part of the water veil. Well, then you're just scooping up your cards, right? You're, well, he's got to show me. He's got to show me. I know, but okay. In your mind, you're you're thinking, what am I going to eat for dinner? Because I, I didn't uh, win. I'm kind of sad. Looks like I'm like, I'm right. right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here it is. Part of the water veil from Jacob Hagen. Todd's tapped out. He's not going to get another turn. Extends the hand, and it is Jacob Hagen and Green Blue Crush crushing his way into the finals. Dispatching the most storied player on the SEG Tour. Yeah, playing with it was really the top deck of the weekend. Both Todd and Noah Walker making it into the top eight with it. Some great records. It also finished ninth and tenth in the tournament. It's, it was pretty great. And we've been talking all weekend.